Hi and welcome. This is a video about projectile motion. What I'll cover in this video is just the concepts of projectile motion. I'll basically set up the ideas behind it, what to look for, and give you the starting point for solving problems. The next couple of videos will be solving projectile motion, in particular the two types, the horizontally launched and the vertically, I'm sorry, the balloon launched at an angle. So ideally we want to be able to calculate many things about an object being projected or launched. So in other words, we take, we're solving these problems. So if we take like a cannon, this is my cannon, I guess, and we launch an object, we want to be able to figure out how high did it go, how far, maybe how fast, how long, uh, maybe this exact height, you know, how high did it go. So we're looking at all these features. And um, we're going to basically use kinematics to solve this, but the biggest hint or the biggest way to solve this is we have two motions, which means we need at least two equations. So that's what I'm going to basically discuss in this lecture. So something to think about, I love this experiment, where you take um, an object dropped and an object launched. And the question is, if you have them at the same exact height, which one falls first? Is it the one that's in free fall or the one that's launched? assuming that the heights are the same. So we're going to uh, look at, since I'm not going to do the demonstration, I'll show you a video demonstration of what this might look like. And at the end, we'll do a little quiz. Um, if you have two balls, they're kicked off a cliff. One happens to be kicked straight up, while one's kicked at an angle. And they both have the same initial speed. Uh, what is true? So we'll take a look at that. And another one very similar to this. So you could read this on your own or stop the video to read them. Um, but at the end of this video, I want you to be able to answer these questions. So our lab that we're going to do is going to be using our Nerf gun. So yes, we're going to figure out using projectile motion how fast this thing actually launches. And part of your lab is going to be hitting the target. So we need to know the launching velocity of this gun in order to figure that out. So when we talk about projectiles, we're under two degrees of motion or two dimensions. So not only are objects moving up or down, they're actually moving left and right. So we have a coordinate system now with two dimensions, y and x. And because of that, we need to analyze things in what we call the x motion and then the y motion. So these are all examples of um, things under projectiles. The best one is the throwing the basketball, right? If you take it and you launch it like that, that arc that that basketball makes is really a good example. And you can see them here. That's what I like right here. The big thing is they don't push themselves through the air. So a counterexample is like a rocket. So um, as you might know, rockets push themselves through the air. <laughs> that's funny. Um, anyway, um, so this is all under the influence of gravity only. So that's the other key thing. The good news is 90% of your problems is just under gravity, so no air resistance, nothing along those ideas. Um, so the AP, and the AP will be pretty cognizant of that as well. So we'll keep things simple, but um, we can have more advanced systems like rockets. Um, so objects that undergo acceleration uh, due to gravity only, especially when they're launched on a projectile, have this signature shape, which is a parabolic shape. Um, it models the parabola. Um, it actually comes from this kind of model. So remember that we can model um, motion with our kinematic. But if we model specifically, oops, that's not squared, the y of this, so the height at any location, this is actually a quadratic. Um, and that comes from the time piece right here. So you can see um, that this is an exponential. So that basically makes the shape of this, or that's where this come from. I'm not going to really discuss it in great detail, but just know that this is just not, you just know this, this actually comes from mathematically modeling it too. Okay, so in this um, slide right here, what you can see is the two types of things that we're going to focus on. Uh, one's called the horizontally launched projectile, and the one's launched at angles. So PL, projectiles launched at angles, horizontally launched projectiles. And the main signature difference between the two of these is the starting y velocity. So notice that when this thing is projected, it starts to have two arrows. Notice that. 
That's because um, these are our velocity vectors. And notice that not only is it moving horizontally, but it's moving down. So when an object is launched, it has two velocities, and that's what these arrows represent. So the initial velocity of a horizontally launched projectile is always zero in the y direction, but not zero in the x because we're horizontally being launched. We're giving it motion in the horizontal like that. So that's one major characteristic. Um, I'll write it down after because I don't want the video to stop. And then if you notice the difference right here, um, the initial velocity in the y, you may not be able to see it, maybe do it like this, hold on. There you go, now I think you can see it a little better, is that your initial velocity in the y is no longer zero. That automatically makes it a projectile launched at an angle. And as you can see, logically, this is projected at an angle. So the initial y velocity is always zero for these cases. And the initial y velocity is not going to be zero. So that's how I'm going to describe it. Now the other thing I hope you notice in these videos, um, let me just put it back so it's animating here, is some interesting things. First off, if we look at this one, you'll notice that that does not change the entire time. In fact, that's true for this one too. So what's happening is when we launch an object, the object will maintain its velocity because there's no acceleration happening in the x direction. In other words, there's no force acting this way. But as we know, a force is acting along the y, that is the force due to gravity. And notice how the velocity changes here. It's changing by a specific amount each time. So if you watch it, I hope you notice that it's changing by roughly 10 which is close to our g, 9.81. So yes, gravity is infecting it, but it only affects the motion this way. So whatever motion you give in this direction, the horizontal, it will keep. So if you give 100, it will stay 100. If you give 60, it will stay 60. And notice that the arrow stays the same too. And then you see that the y does change because gravity pulls it down. So it gets faster and faster. So this arrow gets longer and longer. So if you notice in this video, or this animation, you see that the velocity y changes right as you might imagine it's rising here so you have an up arrow disappears and then goes down so that's why we have a negative velocity here and quite technically this one should also be negative but i think it was just trying to make a point here but you can see the idea so some of the big take homes from this is why velocity changes by the rate of gravity which makes sense hopefully and then the x stays constant So, showing you this, so let me show you the video of this. So, we're going to skip to the good part. So, in this video, what we have is this person, and he's going to launch an object and drop an object at the exact same time at the exact same height. So, let's see what your prediction was and see if it matches. I actually have this demonstration in a smaller form. This is just a cooler one because it's bigger. So it's showing you that this is going to launch and drop at the same time. That's what he's showing you here. There you go. And now here's full scale. Same height. Boom. Take a look at that. Isn't that so cool? Let's watch it again. Boom. Okay, very cool. So what does this mean? It means that all objects fall at the same rate. That lecture that I talked about earlier with free fall is still true. They're, that ball, both of them, whether it's dropped like this red object here or launched, are under the same influence of gravity. But since there's nothing that affects the change in horizontal motion, it will just keep falling like as if there was just gravity acting on it. So what this means is a horizontally launched projectile, or pretty much most projectiles, act like free fall. So if you notice here, they're breaking down a horizontally launched projectile right now. 
remember that it has two motions. It has an X motion, which is this green, and it has a Y motion, which is this uh, red right here. Now, if you plot it, because it's representing every you know second, if you will, the Y and the X, you get that curve. The curve comes from this, the equal segments of the X direction and the changing segments of the Y. So you can see that curve happening here. So they fall because they're under refall, the same rate. Mythbusters does this too. It's really cool. Um, I'll let you watch that on your own. So naturally, this is to explain why you see this curve. That's because without gravity, the objects will just keep going in a straight path. But what we see is that they fall every second farther and farther. Um, and same thing, they're falling. So how to solve these problems? So the good news is we're not doing anything more difficult um, in terms of the equations. They're the same equations we use. But since we have two motions, we have to separate them out. We have to analyze them independently as x and independently as y. So I like to use this uh, chart to help me solve problems. And you'll see as I solve problems, I'm going to use this chart as well. But what you can see is since the x motion is constant, we use the constant motion equation. So the only equation we use for x is velocity is distance over time. And notice that I start putting indices here to distinguish between x and y because we have two motions. So remember, regardless of the type of projectile that we have, for example, something like this, this is going to have several features. It's going to have an x distance, right? And then it's going to have a y distance. That's what this x represents, dx. And as it's moving, it's going to have an x velocity and a y velocity. So it's actually not too much more complicated. Um, what makes it complicated is now we have to just separate out these, separate these things. So that's why I have a by here and a vx, and a dy and a dx here. And that's what these represent. So v equals delta x over t is another way to write this, as long as you remember that this refers to x like that. 